In America in 1956, a gallon of gas was 31 cents. Milk was 17 cents a quart. And Jimmy Hoffa was consolidating his power within the Central States Conference of the Teamsters Union. You guys ready? Yeah, let's go. Seems to be the problem, officer. We're here to maintain order. So are we, Mr. Hoffa. Well, then we shouldn't have any trouble at all, should we? Oh, uh, sure. Won't you let Mr. Hoffa come in? Yeah. 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 Okay, but just Hoffa. Powers, too. That's right. All right, all right, come on. I told you that national contract wasn't going to go down easy. They don't want to be part of your big plan. I got too much independence. Yeah, well, who the hell's the main creep who's got their ears? Oh, this guy named Stan. Come on, fire up. But then, yeah, he's got the opposition too much. of a national contract. I know, I know! Hey, I'm you! I mean, I didn't get my head broke when you were kids! Now let me tell you why I want the contract! Now I understand! I know! You lose a little bit in terms of independent bargaining. But together... As brothers, you and me, brothers, together, we'll make sure that every teamster gets what he needs, a decent wage, a decent pension, and a little respect for the job you do. Omar's a thief! Wait a minute. Is somebody here actually ridiculing the reputation of Dan Allmeyer? It's all right. It's all right. Let me tell you something. Dan Allmeyer has been a loyal business agent for almost 20 years before a lot of you were born. Dan Allmeyer fought with me and Randy Powers out in the street. He got his head broken back in 1932. And 33 and 34 and 35, and again in 37, where were you? All right. As far as Hopper's concerned, Dan O'Meyer is a good man. I say he's a good man. And 
If anybody don't agree with me, so help me God, I'll take a club to you myself. Now, I want you all to understand, there's no shenanigans going on here, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one of you from the rank and file, and I'm going to raise him up. Now, where's this guy Stanton? Get him up here. Understand me? one of us would be easier to handle. I don't like it. I don't care what you like, I like it. In case you ain't got the message you're through, you're finished. Get lost, you're dead. Get out of here. Hey, Rick, it's about time I got some muscle you, in that union uh, anyway. You heard what Jimmy said, oh, my. Hey. Disappear. Come on. In the same year, Robert F. Kennedy was working in Washington for Senator John McClellan's permanent investigating committee, but he still found occasions to return to Hyannisport and visit his family. After this time, a try for the vice presidency might be a smart move. Even if you, uh, even if you lose. Lose? <laughs> Did someone say lose? Even if Jack loses, he won't be the obscure senator from Massachusetts. Not ever again. Thank you, Bobby. That's very encouraging. By the way, I was just talking with Senator McClellan. He told me you may be steering his committee towards an investigation of labor. Not steering, just, uh, just exploring. I was, uh, I was reading an interesting report last night. It seems that uh, some union officials in Portland have gotten into the jukebox business. If a nightclub or a bar won't take their machines, some local officials beat up the employees, shut the business down, and ruin it completely. We are seriously thinking about the Chicago Convention. Is this a time to step on labor toes? Dad, this is John McClellan's committee, not Joe McCarthy's. We aren't witch hunters. We're not discussing a damn committee. We're discussing your brother's future. In the end, it all comes down to politics, doesn't it? You know, the ambassador, Bobby, it always comes down to politics. Where do you stand? The investigation is your concern. The political fallout is mine. I leave all the crusades to you, Bobby. Jack. Robert, will you consult with me before making any real moves? Dad, we're family. I, I didn't know we were doing business. Sooner or later, Bob, everyone does business with everyone. I thought you knew that. And the walls are special marble, imported from Brazil. We have stained glass windows, flown in from Italy. It's a $5 million monument to labor Bob. Quite a place, Eddie. Quite a place. That's Beck's office, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Days out of town. Bob. Would you like to see inside? Uh, I've heard a great deal about it. We're coming through.
This is it, Bob. Dave Beck's office. The office of the president of the world's largest union. He usually keeps it under lock and key, but I, um, I sometimes show it to special visitors. This is the pen that Dave used to end a strike, put a million trucks back on the road. This is a photograph of Dave Beck's good friend, President Dwight D. Eisenhower, personally inscribed. Bob. This is what Dave looks out on every day when he contemplates the problems of the American working man. Very, that's very impressive, Eddie. Thank you for the tour, and please give this copy of my brother's book to Mr. Beck. Oh, yes, for a fellow's encouraged. It's a personally inscribed to Dave Beck. Nice. All right, they told me you're in here. I got a couple of legal. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, this is. Uh... I know, the Kennedy kid. You're uh, the senator's younger brother. Am I right or am I right? Uh, yes. How did you know? Kid, I make it my business to know everybody who can help me, and anybody who can hurt me. You know who I am? I'm Jimmy Hoffa, ninth vice president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, chairman of the 13 state Central Conference of Teamsters. Chairman of the Michigan Conference of Teamsters, Chairman Joint Council 43, <laughs> and President of Teamsters Local 299. Uh, I'm uh, Bob Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, don't let it go so quick, kid. It's a sign of weakness. Thanks. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, Jim, uh, Jim, I was just about to show Bob out. Oh, let me walk with you. <laughs> Bob, I've had my eye on you. You mind if I call you, Bob? Uh, call me Jimmy. Feel free. I've been watching your work. You and McClellan. Hey, that uh, Talbot case, the clothing procurement mess, that shipping scandal. I think you and the permanent committee are doing one hell of a job, and keep up the good work. Thanks for the endorsement, Mr. Hoffa. The name is Jimmy. So, Bob, what are you planning on looking into next? Rumor has it he's considering a close look at the American labor movement. Oh, uh... uh... Eddie gets around, hey. Uh, sorry, Bob, I don't think there's any corruption in the labor movement, but I got a surprise for you. I welcome your investigation. Correction, I encourage it. We gotta know where the rats are, if there are any rats. So if you need my help, let me know. Thanks, uh, Jimmy. I, I want a clean house. As clean as you can make it. So use a big broom. I won't forget the offer. <laughs> now, that's the ticket, kid. No weakness this time. Harvey Trace. The truth, Bob. What unions you plan to investigate? If it's the Teamsters, you'll be the first to know. start an investigation like that, and in one quick stroke, you'll alienate the entire labor vote in this country. Tell that to Clark Mollenhoff. Every time I look up, I'm shoving another piece of evidence under my nose. Good morning, gentlemen. Hello, Clark. Dave, I'm sure you know Clark Mollenhoff. Hi, Dave. Hello. That really was a state. Deep blame. Holder of the towels. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm not sure this labor investigation is in our jurisdiction. Bob, oh, the sworn testimony that Teamster records are being shredded. Look, we got false financial reports are being filed. Here, go ahead, take a look. Go ahead, look. <clears throat> There's evidence of union goon squads, mob infiltration. Go ahead, take a look. Now, Bob, <clears throat> you and I both know that as chief counsel, you could take the permanent committee in any direction you want to go. I'm not so sure I want to go after the Teamsters. Even if the corruption travels all the way to Dave Beck himself? Bob. Um, Maybe this thing should be in the Labor Committee. Labor Committee? <laughs> labor Committee is stacked with politicians who take campaign funds from Labor. 
You haven't conducted a decent investigation in five years. Bob, there's trouble in the Teamsters. I'm talking about the most powerful union in the country. And it's a good union. But it's in danger. Now, <clears throat> Mr. Robert Kennedy, if you don't have the guts to clean up the Teamsters, well, you're just going to have to look at my ugly face every day until you do. Clark, why are you pressing me? You're naive. Don't laugh. I don't think the dangers scare you. Hell, I think they excite you, and that's exactly what this investigation needs. A crusader. Bob, I got a very good contact in L.A., a friend of mine in Seattle. Why don't you let me set up a few meetings? A little exploration, that's all I'm asking. I'll think about it. Good. Dave? Nice talking to you. Clark, you ma'am. Keep it! I'm sorry Jack didn't get the VP spot in Chicago. Oh, Jack got what he needed. He got exposure. Now, at least no one can blame him for the Stevenson defeat. What do you, what do you think of these tips we're getting from Mollenhoff? Solid gold. Frank Brewster may have plenty to hide. He's chairman of the Western Conference of Teamsters. He owns a string of racehorses, and he uses union funds to pay for them. And another thing, he's Beck's hand-picked milk-fed successor. What about Rossi and uh, Waksberg? Mollenhoff is on the money again. Rossi is a hood. He's had dealings with the union. Dutch Waksberg is an inside man. I believe he has hard evidence on Brewster. Will he trade? Who knows? I'll take uh, Rossi and the others. And I'll make contact with Waksberg. Oh, where exactly are we, Bob? Mr. Rogers, Mr. Cilio. Yes? Captain Hamilton, Intelligence Division, LAPD. Rogers, Basilio. I uh, thought we should use cover names. Do you really think the names Kennedy and DeSantis will strike terror in the hearts of evil men? <laughs> uh, some people may know they're investigators in town, so I took the precaution of changing your hotel reservations. You did say you wanted to be inconspicuous, now, didn't you? Nice place. Very so what fair. So now I am part of a big time Senate investigation. What can I do for you, Mr. Rogers? <laughs> or should I say Kennedy? We both represent men of stature, men of resource. Now that we both understand each other, what do you want? I want you to get out. You don't have a thing. You're just here to see what I got. Sorry, Mr. Rossi. No deal. Look, pal, everyone takes. We get good contracts. That's all I care about. Me and a million others. Hell, I mean, uh, let them skim a little off the top. Who cares? Hell, we all cheat. And that's what makes us a great country. Look, I said I'd give you the story. But I'm not going to name names. But I don't know who they're going to go after next. Me, my wife, and my daughter. They already got my brother. So at halfway through the drive shaft on his truck, it snapped while he was highballing down the Sierra Nevadas. Truck spun out, nearly tore his body in half. Sorry, I know how you feel. I lost a brother. Look, your brother died fighting the war. Mine nearly died fighting hoods and two-bit mobsters right here. And the damn police did nothing. The American family has to get rid of three tons of that stuff every year? I never stop to think about it. Most people don't. Val and I did. That's why we started our own collection business. One day, a union goon came by. He said it was time to organize. 
I said, well, why should we organize? There's only two of us. I wasn't planning to hit my brother for a raise. So then you put the squeeze on? Blew up my car, tore our office apart. I decided the guy was right. It was definitely time to go union. I think we're being followed. Al wanted to talk. I stopped him. Maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe he'd still be in one piece. Afraid he got to look at our escort service. I think it's a time to head to Seattle. I want to hear what our other contact has to say. Mr. Tuck Mel, how much do you know about Frank Brewster? Well, he's president of the Western Conference of the Teamsters. He lives high on the hog, he's on the take. Yeah, I know that, but uh, how much more will we learn? I think not from me. I'm sorry, Mr. Kennedy, I'd like to help. But most reporters don't trust congressional investigations. We never have. We feel they're all flash and no substance. This investigation could surprise you. I still can't reach Brewster or his attorney, Sam Bassett. Well, let me guess. No one's home? Brewster thinks if uh, he can stall long enough, I'll lose interest, right? Won't you? Come on, Ed. We need to know what you know. Sorry. Paul Staples and I have been working on this story for over eight years now. We're not handing over that kind of information to the first two hot shots that come knocking at the door. We saw one like that in L.A. Yeah, well, they tend to crop up during teams for investigations. Well, that's why you can't find Sam Bassett. He's in that car. But I'm getting tired of this runaround from them and from you. Come on, Ned. I want it all. We're both digging out a story. We can help each other. Nope. Our story is incomplete. There are financial records we can't touch. The committee has subpoena power. Uh, you help us find the evidence, and we uh, help you and Mr. Staples complete your story. Hey, come on, you guys. Quit ganging up on me. Come on, Ned. That's what you wanted all along, isn't it? You help us, we help you. You're right, OK? Right. I will put them through. Mm -hmm. Right. It's for you, Jim, at Seattle. Put it on the box. Come on, talk to me. Kennedy's in town. Huh. Is he moving on Brewster? Well, he's trying, but Frank's using a broken fuel run. He'll avoid the kid at all costs. <sighs> Keep me informed. Brewster is a nickel and dime amateur by comparison. But he did handle a few transactions for the old man. And that's where Paul and I got our information. From the contact inside the Teamsters, we found that the stink in the union was coming from the old man himself, Dave Beck. You better be kidding me. I'll take a look. Incredible. TV set, shirts, undershirts, ties. Diapers? <laughs> Wait, it gets better. Major construction and repair to the Beck Mansion. Additional rooms, six-car garage, 
landscaping, and paid for with union funds. Wait a minute. Didn't Beck sell this house to the union a couple of years ago? Yeah, that's right. That means the union gave Beck a free house, paid for the remodeling, and then bought a house they already owned at more than twice the original price. They handed Beck a $350,000 tax-free gift. Now I have to talk to Brewster. He's going to help me accuse the president of the nation's largest union of being corrupt. Hi, my name is Bob Kennedy. I'm the uh, chief counsel for the Senate Permanent Investigating Committee. I've been looking for you, Mr. Bassett, and your client, Frank Brewster. I'll only say this once, if I don't get a definite appointment, See, Brewster, within the next 10 minutes, I can assure you our investigators will find him and subpoena him to Washington. That's the way you want it. Just uh, drive this lovely car to the airport and uh, purchase your airline tickets immediately. And I mean tonight. Avoid the uh, Christmas rush. Remember, 10 minutes, that's all you get. I see Brewster now, or I see you both in Washington. Just got the word. Brewster's gonna talk. It looks like Beck is finished. Yeah. I know. And so ends the reign of his majesty. The wheel. Congratulations, Jim. It's only a matter of time now. What about Kennedy? He got his hands on Beck. That'll be his big thrill. What more could the fresh punk want? How does the big chair feel? It feels nice. First time in memory, I can recall you understating a case. The question is, what do I do with it? Jack, the corruption is spreading like cancer and mob fingerprints all over it. Why not leave it to the FBI? Hoover won't let the Bureau get near it. He's a statistical cop. He likes crimes of high visibility, bank robberies, auto theft rings, domestic espionage. And when it comes to investigations that are political dynamite, he, he runs. John Edgar uh, <laughs> Honey, <laughs> I'll keep your vision under my hat. You don't wear a hat. What do you want from me, Bobby? I want your help in forming a new committee. And I, I want you on it. This has to be weighed carefully. You read the report. The corruption is a mile wide. Jack, we have to clean up the Teamsters and every other dirty house in the labor movement. Hold on, Bobby. Slow down. This is a balancing act. I've already heard from George Meany and Walter Ruther. Why? Well, they, uh, they didn't call to wish me Merry Christmas. They know what you're up to. If their houses are clean, they have nothing to fear. Are you telling me there are problems in the AFL and the UAW? I don't know. I don't know. But what we have to do is hold the entire labor and management field under a spotlight. 
Maybe I should handle it through my uh, government service committee. No! I can't control it in there. I am plugged into McClellan. And any committee that is formed, McClellan has to head it. I'm his chief counsel. We need a new committee with a new charter. Only you and McClellan can form it. You, uh... You've already cut your deal with McClellan, haven't you? You should have cut one with me first, Bobby. Why? Are you planning to hold me up? On December 6th, you started investigating organized crime in Seattle. On December 11th, you initiated a preliminary investigation of organized crime and its connection to Longshoremen Jack, in Los Angeles. Jack, have you been spying on me? Look, organized crime is part of my investigation. Bobby... It's not part of mine. Not if you want me involved. Jack, I'm offering you high visibility. You go around the country, you kiss the babies, you make the speeches, and in Washington, I'll give you the right questions to nail the right people in front of a TV camera and 40 million voters. <laughs> It'll work for Keith over. It'll work for you. Just protect my back in the committee. So will you give me room to move? <laughs> With limitations, Bobby. If this becomes a McCarthy witch hunt, I win nothing. Certainly not the presidency. Maybe not another term as senator. I hate playing politics with this issue. We have no choice. I can't afford to be seen as anti-labor. Can I just see that notebook? Okay, it's your guarantee. You drive a hard bargain. What about Nini? From what we know now, there's no need to investigate. If the situation should change, you'll be the first to know. All right. Why don't we uh, discuss this with the ambassador? Two weeks after the Kennedy brothers conferred with Senator McClellan, a powerful new committee was formed. The Senate Committee on Improper Activities in the Labor or Management Field began what the press would soon call the Great Investigation. Bob Kennedy was named Chief Counsel. For the first time, a specially authorized committee with broad powers would begin a war on labor racketeering. Hey, Farmer John, how goes it? What are you doing here? It's real nice here, Jim, you know? I always want a little garden like this. All right, all right. Let's get to the main event. What do you want? I got a call from St. Louis. The, the boy's got a problem. This is my home. I don't discuss those kind of problems in my home. Jimmy, yeah, we do favors for you, you do some for us. And that's the way it works, remember? Yeah. All right, Al. Hurry up. I don't want to upset Joe. Well, neither do I. Yeah, how's she feeling, by the way? She, she got the problem with... Maybe I ought to go up and say hello. You're an errand boy. Now talk to me and talk fast. Two guys. So I have Polito. They need a job. They're pushers. They've been indicted. Union. Is that your decision? That's my decision. Hey, pal. You know, I'm on your side. I'll just give our friends in St. Louis a call. You got a dime? You tell those guys down south they don't like my decision, they can come up here and kill the golden goose. Okay, tough guy. I'll pass on the work. Listen, uh, do me a favor, huh? Give a love to Joe, okay? Good luck in D.C. And now that I've finished with the elaborate introductions, let me tell you about the job. It stinks. <laughs> As my investigators, you'll be, you'll be poor. Uh -huh. You'll be digging into sensitive areas. But you'll be developing your own cases, uncovering your own leads. It's your job to collect facts on corruption and the possibility of mob infiltration into the labor movement. And it's my job to present those facts to the Congress. 
You'll report to George DeSantis. He'll give you your leads on three by five cards, and you'll soon see how much he loves his three by five cards. <laughs> That's it, gentlemen. You're uh, unleashed. You're going into areas even the FBI is afraid of. You're going in unarmed. Good luck. Uh, we'll try not to let you down, Mr. Kennedy. Come with me, Joe. Just uh, don't let the country down. <laughs> Don't worry about your wife and kids. I'll take care of them. And here's, here's a C-note for you. Listen, you did me a favor. I won't forget it. Just keep your mouth shut, and I'll take care of everything. So long. He did it, Jimmy. Read it to me. To all teams, the vice presidents, when called before the McClellan Committee, plead the Fifth Amendment. International Brotherhood of Teamsters will not take disciplinary action signed Ina Moan. Yeah, it's signed by Moan, but it's got Beck's prints all over it. I knew it. I knew that old man would finally make a mistake big enough so I could hang him with it. Well, Beck is finished with the committee if they see this, Jimmy. Well, let's make sure they see it, then. I've been feeding Beck to Bobby one bone at a time. Now I'm going to give him the whole carcass. Incredible. The gall of the man. Beck is dragging the Teamsters into a conspiracy of silence. I'm more than a little disturbed myself. How do you think I call? Now that you mention it, I don't know. I'm a Teamster lawyer, Bob. It's possible I can be bothered by some of the same things that bother you. But do you honestly believe that only a Kennedy can feel a sense of moral outrage? Something doesn't smell right. Get me a line on Chapins. Everything. Uh, no, no, I can't say that yet. Uh, let me call you back on this, Jay. Betty Chapins is no longer Teams to Lar. He resigned. He's got a new client. One client, James Riddle Hoffman. Here's the connection. Tinkers to Evers to Chance, Harper to Chaffetz to me. Damn it! Wrong. My truckers don't wait on the road for anybody. If there's a breakdown, management pays for the tow truck and for the time my boys lose. End of conversation. Go. Jimmy, it's Bob Kennedy. Uh, Bobby, what a pleasant surprise. What uh, can I do for you? It's my duty to inform you that I am about to initiate an investigation into your activities. I'm afraid your lawyer made a slight mistake. Oh? What mistake was that? He actually tried to manipulate the federal government. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm ashamed of Eddie. Hell, everybody knows you don't do that. I'm glad you appreciate my position. Why, of course, kid. Say, Bobby, I uh, hope this thing isn't going to get personal. Personal? In what way? Well, I mean, the uh, Democrats must be pretty unhappy with the Teamsters support and Ike in the last election, right? I, I, I don't think we'd bear a grudge if that's what you mean. Good. Because, uh, quite frankly, I'd be prepared to support anybody the Democrats ran in 1960. Just so it isn't Stevenson. <laughs> and, uh, and I mean, anybody. Thanks, Jimmy. I also want you to know I'm taking your advice. What advice is that? McClellan and I are going to use a big broom. We're going to sweep labor clean. <laughs> you know something? That little rat's going to be trouble. Maybe he's guilty about all this damn money. Or maybe he's some kind of a saint looking for a dragon, Jimmy. Yeah, well, St. George has got one weakness. He's got a brother who wants to be president of the United States. All I want to be is president of the Union. Maybe we can reach accommodation. Call Eddie Chaffetz. Tell him to arrange a face-to-face -face with me and the kid. Just me and Kennedy. Tell him uh, I want to smoke the peace pipe. We get to know each other and understand each other. How can he refuse? Okay. I'll take it in the office. 
Jimmy, uh, what if you can't reach an accommodation? Then I'll just eat the little runt alive. Who do you, who do you think you're talking to? First of all, you manipulate the federal government, and then you, you manipulate... Talking about the past. Jimmy Hoffa is a new man. Eddie, the past is a file ten miles thick. He's got mob connections that go back 25 years. He's, he's associated with mob figures in, in, in Minneapolis, Chicago, New York, and Detroit. He's even connected with the Purple Gang in 1932. All right, all right. Maybe Jimmy was a wild kid. And maybe he associated with the wrong people. A Bob. A man turned to the goons in those days, because management turned to them first. Now, Jimmy wants to clean things up. Please, just talk to him. I won't be used again. All I'm talking about is a quiet dinner. It's my home. Get to know each other. I'm willing to bet it'll be mutually beneficial. Bob. I didn't want to bring this up before. But I'm not a well man. Now, I know, I know I've made some mistakes with you in the past. This may be my last chance to do something decent. Please. Annie, uh, would you come in here and work out a date for me to have dinner with Mr. Jacobs and friends? How do you uh, pronounce your name? Chasty. Okay. You said you had something to tell me that would uh, curl my hair. Everybody tells me that these days. What's your story? Jimmy Hoffa has offered to pay me $2,000 a month if I can get a job as an investigator in your committee. He gave me $1,000 in advance, in cash. Jimmy asked you to spy for him? That's right. Uh, Annie, could you come in here? Yeah, now bring your notebook. Mr. Chasty has just curled my hair. John Cy Chasty. Four years in the Coast Guard. Nine years in the Secret Service. Distinguished record. Now doing legal and investigative work for a top law firm in New York City. Comes highly recommended by his employers. Has some health problems. Mild heart condition. Where did you get all that? Mr. Chasty, what you told us isn't evidence. It's your word against Mr. Hoffa. Now, he did hire you as an attorney, didn't he? He could try to hide behind lawyer-client privilege. We're in a gray area on this. It is not what the Bureau would call trouble-free. I, I mean no disrespect, Mr. Hoover. But uh, unfortunately, the only area that seems to be trouble-free at the moment is organized crime. And that seems to be because uh, organized crime isn't getting much trouble from the FBI. I'll let that pass. I'll just chalk it up to inexperience. And the fact that you're Joe Kennedy's son. We'll need evidence that Hoffa asked you to get official documents from government files and the proof that you delivered them. Robert. 
Eddie told me you wanted to set up this meeting personally. I was tickled. Me? Uh, he told me you wanted the meeting. Oh, <laughs> Eddie, you sly fox, you. <laughs> Shoot me. I just thought you two should bury the hatchet. What hatchet? <laughs> You think we need a referee? I think me and Bobby are going to get along just fine. Bobby. Uh -huh. Please. Gentlemen, drink? No. <laughs> Good boy, I don't drink either. You'd be surprised, Bob. You and me got a lot in common. <laughs> Why, hell, you're even the run of the litter, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, do the uh, Teamsters plan to blackmail the entire country? <laughs> what? I mean, this country runs on trucks. It's the ultimate dream of a national contract to uh, hold the entire country for ransom? Hmm. If it was, you think you could stop me? Well, then no one man should have that much power. Hmm. Not even the President of the United States. Uh, gentlemen, dinner. You think politicians are the only people who appreciate power? Don't you understand the working folks need power, too? Do you know how long the boss has been trying to hold down the working man in this country? You see those scars? I was arrested 18 times in one day on the picket line and kept going back. I fought for my food, for the clothes on my back, for the lousy two-bit roof over my head. Nothing was given to me by a rich father. My father isn't in this room, Jim. You were talking to me. <sighs> You're a tough guy. How tough are you? What? Are you, are you tough enough to kick the hoods and the gangsters out of your union? <laughs> what gangsters? Point them out. You're kidding. Of course. What about, what about Johnny Dio? Convicted extortionist. He's a guy I know. I take people at face value. If he's a racketeer, you put him in jail. What about, uh, what about the convicted burglars and crooks that are Teamster officials in the, in the Central States Conference right now? Bobby, you've got to stop listening to the bull that you hear from your reporter friends. They're hanging you out to dry. Newspapers are all anti-union anyway. It's time for you to grow up and stand on your own two feet. I'm telling you, this investigation is ill-advised. It's divisive. And it's a waste of time. Does that mean you uh, try to stop it? If I think that's what's best, yes. I got to protect the Teamsters. That's my job. You aren't the president of the union, Jim. Not yet. I'm working on it. And I'm working the other side of the street. You want to stop me? Is that it? It crossed my mind. Get up, Eddie. Let me ask you something. You're always working out, staying in shape. How good are you at Indian arm wrestling? Huh? <laughs> With Jimmy, there's always some kind of physical competition. Come on, kid. Let me show you how we settle things in my world. Come on, put it up there. I know you want to. Come on. Bob, it's your wife. <laughs> Probably wants to know if you're still alive. Uh, I'm uh, still alive, Ethel. Give her my best. But tell her you got to hurry back Hello? to an important arm wrestle with Jimmy Hoffa. Ah, he's gutless and he knows it. And he might just as well know that I know it. Mm. If 
puts me in the driver's seat. When the going gets tough, he'll remember tonight, and he'll fold. I'm sorry. I, uh, I've got to leave. My, my son has a fever. Oh, Bob, uh, thank you for coming. Enjoy it. I'll get you coat. Nice to see you again. Well, Bobby? Now you can go back to the rest of your world and tell them that Jimmy Hoffa ain't such a bad guy after all. I wish I could say that, Jim. I wish I could. On February 26, 1957, the McClellan Committee began its open hearings. The battle lines were drawn. A powerful Senate committee on one side, powerful leaders of labor and industry on the other, and the American people sitting in judgment. Our charter authorizes us to investigate a growing problem in this country, that problem being the misconduct, abuses, and corruption now taking place in the arena of American commerce. Now, during this hearing, let me assure you that we will examine these problems to the fullest extent and to the satisfaction of the American people. Proceed. One of the committee's first witnesses, James Riddle Hoffa. Over heard me talk. We are in a men's room. <laughs> I remember spending some time in the men's room yesterday, but I don't recall socializing there. <laughs> this room will come to order. <laughs> I said, this room will come to order. Now, the chair observes that we have a very extraordinary audience this morning, but I insist you keep order, or you shall all be removed. Mr. Kennedy, will you proceed? Mr. Hoffa, yesterday, while leaving these hearings, after a witness testified, did you say that SOB, I'll break his back? Who? You. To who? To anyone. What are you getting at, Bobby? Just answer the question. Did you make that statement? Did you threaten any people testifying before this committee? Uh, I'm not concerning any of your witnesses, as I recall. Well, whom did you make it about? I don't know. I may have been discussing somebody in a figure of speech. Whom did you make the statement about, Mr. I Hoffa? I don't know. Well, whose back are you going to break, Mr. Hoffa? I don't know. I don't remember. Whose back, Mr. I Hoffa? I don't know. It's a figure of speech. You understand? Figure of speech, figure of speech. <laughs> On March 26, 1957, John Cy Chasty traveled to a prearranged rendezvous with Jimmy Hoffa. The meeting took place on a Washington street. They were not alone. Hoffa's out of the car. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Smile for the birdie, Hoffa. He's got the stuff in his hand. Yeah, they made the switch. Check that with control. Congratulations. Mr. Hoffa? Yeah, that's me. What do you want? You're under arrest, sir. For what? Trying to bribe a Senate investigator. You want to come with us, please? Like hell I will. I got some friends I got to see. Then I might uh, think about going with you. Hold it. Don't muscle me. You want trouble, you got it. Go ahead, make a mess. You both go down the stairs. Don't threaten the bureau, Mr. Hoffa. You're coming with us. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's get it over with. Get out of here. Go on, hit the road. 
You guys ain't nothing but an itch I gotta scratch. <laughs> Little Lord Fauntleroy. What was you doing, waiting in bed by the phone? It's all right. Go get a cup of coffee. I want to talk to my friend. So, you couldn't wait to see Jimmy in the bracelets, huh? I know what this is about. This puts you and Brother Jack on the front page. You're using Hoffa's hide to jump in the White House? Well, don't count the votes just yet. Jimmy, you never cease to amaze me. Yeah. Did you do your push-ups today? I did mine. All 50 of them. Don't break out the champagne, kid. We got a few rounds to go, you and me. See, this is for the heavyweight championship of the world now. And how do you know? Maybe you missed something? Maybe you made a mistake? No mistakes, Jimmy. Didn't you tell me that before, Mr. Kennedy? A mistake like that could ruin this entire case. I was, I was thinking of Cy Chasty. Of his safety. Five. Five presidents have had enough faith to leave me in charge of the greatest law enforcement agency in the world. You are the first man to question that ability. I don't like it, Mr. Kennedy. I, I don't question your ability. But you challenge my performance. I was simply asking certain questions on certain issues. Organized crime, again? Bob, I'm afraid, as a young man, you see a conspiracy under every rock. Take the advice of an older and wiser man. There is no conspiracy. There is a problem, and I am dealing with it. I am not on a moral crusade. I am a law enforcement officer. So am I. No, Bob. You are only a soldier in the ranks. Someday that will change, Mr. Hoover. Bob, it's true. Dave Beck just flew the coop. He left the country at 10.15 this morning. You are kidding. I guess he isn't anxious to face the music. Huh? As far as teams to president, he's finished. Power vacuum? Why? Hoff is the only logical successor. If he avoids a conviction before the Teamsters meet in Miami, he'll fill the slot. And Ed Williams is using every trick in the book to delay the trial. What if he's uh, convicted after the Miami Convention? Uh, even if he goes to jail, chances are he can handpick a caretaker administration. Run the union from behind bars. It's been done before. We uh, better accelerate. Yeah. Hello, oh, Bucky. <laughs> Bill. I thought you were planning to jump off the Hopper Express. I'm concerned about what they're going to do. Ed Williams is a great trial lawyer. Good morning, Jack. Bobby, let justice handle the case. Jack? It's their move. You seem to be under the impression that every job in Washington is yours, including the head of the FBI. He, uh, he talked to you? Talk isn't exactly the word I'd use. Senator. Okay. Okay, you win. I'll take it easy on Hoffer and uh, easy on J. Edgar. The committee will come to order. 
Mr. Powers, will you be sworn? Uh, yes, sir. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. The McClellan committee hearings continued in the Senate caucus room, while across town, Jimmy went on trial for trying to bribe a McClellan committee investigator. Well, now, to continue, Mr. Chasty, you say you're a lawyer, the defendant's lawyer? Yes, sir. And you have also been an investigator, uh, both in government service and in private, is that right? Yes. And in your experience, your long experience as an investigator, you have had occasion to testify. Yes, sir. You have testified many times in many trials to the point where one might almost refer to you as a professional witness. I object. Overruled. Now, as a professional investigator, were you not employed to investigate the NAACP, the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People? I object to that. Objection. Sustained. Jury will disregard the question. There's more to that statement. He opened up that line of questions. Let me ask questions only. Would you please tell the court, Mr. Kennedy, weren't you a millionaire at the age of four years? Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't see what that has to do with anything. Of course you don't, but I'm certain the lawyers in this room will. There you go, Counselor. You know something, Bob? It's a pleasure to be by you this education. Quiet. I'm simply trying to establish, Mr. Kennedy, whether you have any compassion for the working Objection. Man or the underprivileged in this Objection, country. Objection, Your Honor. Or is this investigation of yours just a way of hunting I have to object. of your own making? Hey, Bob, get a little tough. How about this? Objection sustained. Now, Mr. Kennedy, direct your attention to the night of February 19th, 1957. Didn't you have occasion to dine with the defendant, Mr. Hoffa, at the home of a mutual friend, Mr. Edward Chaffetz? Yes. Yes, I did. And at dinner, most people have normal dinner conversation, wouldn't you say? Yes, I suppose they do. So isn't it possible that some of your top secret information, that same information that Mr. Hoffa presumably received from Mr. Chasty, isn't it possible that part of that information may have come from your own mouth over roast beef and potatoes? No. No, it, it isn't possible. It isn't? I think you're confusing the issue. I'm not confusing the issue, Mr. Kennedy, because I don't see a difference between information received in an envelope from Mr. Chasty and information received from you as part of your idle dinner chit-chat. The confusion is all yours. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. You may step down. Hey, Bob. Sorry. I told you it wasn't going to be easy. Quiet, Mr. Hopper, quiet! Yes, I took the documents. Why shouldn't I take them? After all, I hired Cy Chasty as my lawyer. How was I to know he was giving me committee documents? He certainly didn't tell me. It's a dirty business when a man can't even trust his own lawyer. I guess that's what happens when you start doing business with a Kennedy. And uh, what exactly can you tell us about the Test Fleet Corporation? I respectfully refuse to answer on the grounds of the First, Fifth, and Fourteenth Amendments. And uh, what of Mr. Hoffa's involvement? I respectfully refuse to answer I, uh, on the grounds of the no First, questions the Fifth, time. and Fourteenth Amendments. He beat you, didn't he, kid? Give me one, Bobby! Remember this? Well, it's really going to be tough on the kid. 
He's been taught all his life, Mr. Rich. You're right. Could you look over this well, I hate to see him jump. I really do. He could have turned out all right once he grew up and got away from Daddy. Don't worry about Bob. We're planning to send him a parachute. Yeah. But Bob, you better have it repacked before you jump. I don't trust myself. <laughs> After his victory in the Chastity trial, Jimmy was moving to become president of the union. Nothing and no one would stand in his way. So, you demand my financial records. You want all my books from all my locals? Is that a fact, Bobby? Well, let me tell you what I think of your two-bit committee. And their subpoenas. And you. Now get out of my office. And if you're smart, you'll stay out of my way. This isn't between the two of us, Jimmy. This is between you and the government of the United States. And you cannot refuse to answer subpoenas. And you will not flout the laws of this country. I'll give you exactly three minutes to come up with a formula for turning over those documents. And if you don't come up with an acceptable response, I will come back here with an army. And if you don't think that I have the authority to do it, I you just ask any one of your 300 attorneys. You're trying to keep me from becoming the president of this great union. Well, it won't work, Bobby. No matter what you do, you will never turn the American working man against oh, me. Oh, Jimmy, come down off the soapbox, huh? I don't want to hear your electioneering. Hmm? I you know what Miami? this little runt did. He appointed himself judge and jury over James Riddle Hoffman. No, no, Jimmy. No. Actually, I am leaving that responsibility to an American courtroom. Yeah? You tried that once and you lost, Bobby. You ready for round two? Is he that stupid? I guess I am. Mr. Hoffa, I'd like to discuss the terms for getting those documents. Jim, there's a rumor that the dissidents moving to prevent your election are getting stronger. <laughs> I don't think they like your strong arm tactics. Hey, what dissidents? What are you talking about, some lunatic fringe group? And I don't need no strong arm tactics to win this election. I ain't got to con my way into the job, because I got something Bobby Kennedy will never understand. The love of these people. This is my ballpark. This ain't no Senate investigating committee. Hoppe calls the shots, not Bobby Kennedy. And Hoppe wins, and you know why? Because Hoppe gets his people what they want. And they all know it, too. So, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, go back to your boyfriend and tell him it's in the bag. <laughs> go ahead, Phil. We have an informant. The credentials committees are set up. They're rubber stamping Hoffa delegates. He's illegally loading the convention with mob people, and we can prove it if... What? If we can get our hands on the committee minutes. I'll speak with McClellan. This has to be a full committee operation. Well, you better move fast. Once Hoffa's in, it'll be murder to get him out. Okay. Fine. Check it again. But, Jimmy, we checked it once. We'll do it again. I told you, I pumped Mullen off. He told me Bobby Kennedy's trying to screw up this convention. <laughs> I'm not going to let him. Slimy little runt. Closing in. I can feel him. Uh, Jimmy, uh, we already checked the room once. Right, Tony? Yeah. Went <laughs> through. <laughs> We don't have to check this room. <laughs> There's no bugs in this room. <laughs> it's the women. Don't you get it? He's using the women as spies. I got him now. Listen, Randy, let me tell you what I want you to do. You call everybody. And you tell them all that anybody who wants a future with Jimmy Hoffa in this union has nothing to do with broads at this convention. You got it? <laughs> well, get on it. Oh, Jimmy, this is crazy. Okay, 
Jimmy. This is Jimmy Hoffa. Get the broads out of your room now. <laughs> Got you this time, Bobby. Got you. <laughs> this is Jimmy Hoffa. You let him know up and down the halls. Anybody wants a future with me? No broads in their rooms. Come here. Smell it. Smell. Come on. Smell it. Smell what? Go on. See? You catch that funny smell? It's a special powder. Bobby Kennedy sprinkled this suit with a special powder. I read about it in Life magazine. The FBI's got an electronic device. They can follow this suit any place. We're going to sandbag them. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's driving his suit to Chicago tonight. <laughs> Non-stop, all the way to the Windy City. Screw the FBI. No, you don't. No, you don't. No. No, you don't. There aren't enough of you guys in the whole world to get me down. <laughs> Jimmy Hoffa, labor's controversial firebrand has been elected president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. Jimmy Hoffa is not a vindictive man. I have nothing against Bobby Kennedy. And I have nothing against the McClellan Committee. They may hate Hoffa, but Hoffa does not hate them. Why should I hate a committee that abuses its power? The danger is not to me. The true danger is to the decent and honest working men of America! Committee minutes have been subpoenaed. Marshals from the Miami office are now seizing your files in your offices upstairs. Watch out, kind of thing. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy, I'm glad you're here. What's the matter, Robert? Jimmy, I was just telling this wonderful gentleman how much we'd love to help him, but there's been a real tragedy here. You want to come this way, Phil? What tragedy? Well, what happened? Well, I'm telling you, we wanted to give this guy the minutes. We'd love to give it to them, but it yeah. seems that the maid walked out with them. The maid? The maid. We ran after her. We chased her, but she threw them down the incinerator. We did all we could. The they went up in smoke. Wait, wait, it's a terrible wait, wait, tragedy. Wait, wait, wait. Which incinerator? Huh? Which incinerator? Uh, I, uh, the, one, the one out there, I think. This incinerator. Hey, this incinerator. Yeah, yeah. That's the sure? one. Yeah, I'm sure. Tragedy. She missed the incinerator. Got the laundry sheet instead. This is it, Jimmy. This is it. The minutes to the committee. Thank you. I enjoy your party. <laughs> Mr. Hoffa. Mr. Hoffa. Mr. Hoffa, I'm sorry. Get out of here, you're fired! You see that? Bobby Kennedy did that. My first act as Teamster president, and I fire an honest working man. Those minutes could be damaging, Jimmy. We could be facing a long, protracted court battle. Once I get my union, 
before I let that happen, I'll get him. You don't know what you're talking about, Jack. I know exactly what I'm talking about. People were killed to form this union. Heads were broken. They can be broken to save it. The committee minutes confiscated at the Miami Convention did indeed prove damaging. On October 23, 1957, Judge F. Dickinson Letts, at the federal courthouse in Washington, barred Jimmy from taking office as president of the Teamsters. Jimmy Hoffa was out of a job. Let's hear it. Oh, Jimmy. <clears throat> Worked out a deal. Judge Letts will accept a three-man board of monitors to oversee your operations, President. Good job. Oh, hold on, hold on. It's a piece of cake. Every morning you wake up, you're going to find a three-man watchdog committee looking on you through. <laughs> That's no problem. Also, we've got to depict Jimmy Hoffa knee-deep in contrition. I'm talking about a token cleaner. Unload some of the boys. Well, for a fact, no disrespect intended, Tony. Get uh, Kennedy off your back. Just drop one ex-criminal and half a dozen key cities, you'll do one to speak. Forget it. Now, oh, this creep meanie kicked the Teamsters out of the AFL-CIO. We've been abandoned, Jimmy. We have to start pitching for public support. We don't need the AFL-CIO. We're not looking good. Jimmy, a federal court has instructed you to clean up the union. You're going to be under the jurisdiction of a board of monitors. Jimmy, don't you see? It's a great umbrella. The boys will understand. Jimmy Hoffa does not kick guys out of the Teamsters. Jimmy, what, what did you always teach me? You always taught me, cut your losses, Randy, cut your losses. Well, this is one of those times. Cut a few loose. I also taught you not to abandon your friends. I'm not George Meany. I stick by the people who helped me build my union. Jimmy, this could be the worst mistake you ever make. End of conversation. You know, Eddie Chaffetz is trying to press the notion that Hoffa played ball with the mob as part of his game plan. Once in, his real objective has been getting the mob out. Nobody on the hill is buying that, are they? Not yet, but that could change. Some members of the committee are starting to worry, Bobby. They think you're skating on thin ice. They're concerned you're no longer dealing with corruption in labor, but you're bronzing out. You could be starting to target organized crime. Jack, you said you'd back me. I didn't plan on following this route. But the more I looked into Jimmy, the more I began to realize that we have a moral imperative here. The Republican administration isn't interested in cleaning up the mess in the unions. It's up to us. Bobby, you're expanding the borders of the investigation. That wasn't part of our arrangement. We have to reevaluate. The mob is taking a bite out of every consumer dollar. For the problem to address, we have to address it. Bobby, the answer is no. I think it's time we show the rest of the country what the mob really looks like. They've only seen hoods and mobsters in the movies. It's time they see the truth. For I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. And miles to go before I sleep. <laughs> you know, even with all this evidence, I still can't get anyone to admit there is such a thing as a national crime syndicate in this country. Even Hoover won't admit it. Hoover is a practical man. What does that mean? That means he doesn't get involved in investigations he can't win. No matter how hard you try, Bobby, you won't be able to bring the mob to a screeching halt. Maybe not. But I'll take what I can get. <laughs>
How are you? Hey, 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 Bonjour. Michael. Bonjour. Ah, bonjour, no, there. Como está? Mr. Boko. A pleasure. A pleasure. I'm sorry about the trouble you're having. You and Hoffman. I'm afraid that his trouble is now our trouble. This McClellan committee is starting to investigate the vending machine in the construction business on the East Coast, the cheese and the olive oil business down south. They even into the laundries and the bakeries out west. So that's, that's trouble. See, we are building for ourselves a corporate base with branch offices in all the major cities of America. Now, this is the way conglomerates are built. What we're doing is very much in the American tradition. Now, I wouldn't want to see this uh, fragile new venture of ours fall under a constant uh, assault by uh, a proud, uh, moralistic young man. Uh, Mr. Kennedy is very daring, but I would like to see him be helped before he injures himself. But Mr. Boca, I don't like the way he's leaning on Jimmy. The boy will grow. Believe me. The cops! The cops! He's a cop! 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 He's a Chief suspect in at least three homicides. And uh, now for the roll call. Carlo Gambino, Joe Rosato, uh, Vito Genovese, Russell Buffalino, uh, Louis Scalish, Joe Profacci, and our old friend, Tony Buono. It's at least 50 men with arrest records, 35 with convictions, 18 men arrested in connection with murder, 15 in connection with narcotics, 22 for uh, illegal use of firearms. Nice group. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Barbara. I hope you don't mind, but we're going to have 65 for tea today. <laughs> and now for the door prize. It seems that this delightful gathering was also attended by 22 men involved directly in union politics. 22 officials involved in the business of labor or labor management. Jack, there's your link. Will you, uh, will you back me now? What's your next move? I uh, plan to see the New York DA. He's got some new information on Hoffa's wiretap trial. Well, uh, you say hello to Frank Hogan, and uh, I'll take care of the committee. <laughs> Bob went to New York to get information on Jimmy Hoffa's wiretap trial. Jimmy had been indicted, accused of bugging the members of his own union in an attempt to gain absolute control of the New York Conference of Teamsters. Well, make up your mind. Guts, I'll give you that. Hey, take another car. This one's dangerous. So how's the family? Fine, fine. Good. How's yours? Fine. You, uh... You want to see my kids? Now, what are you trying to do? Make me feel guilty? <laughs> yeah. Is it working? No, not for a second. Well, let me see your kids. What are you afraid of? It's just you and me. A couple of proud fathers. <laughs> Oh, 
It's a lucky I'm rich. I need a bigger wallet than you. <laughs> Ha, 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 the little one. <laughs> so, how come a bum like you winds up with a beautiful family like that? I don't know. I'm just lucky, I guess. Yeah. Maybe you are. I'm going to give you some advice. Kid, you're mixing in things that you don't understand. And there's some people that are getting very tense. People? Yeah. Oh, you mean like the people who went to the party last week? What party? You know, the uh, little sit-down in upstate New York? Jimmy, didn't you get your invitation? Take it easy, Bobby. I know what I'm talking about. This is not like touch football on Hickory Hill. This is dangerous. That's so is touch football at Hickory Hill. I'm trying to tell you something. Don't warn me, Jimmy. I don't like warnings. Okay. It ain't a warning. Take it as advice from a guy who knows. What do you got to go after me so hard for anyway? It's not you, Jimmy. It's what you represent. <laughs> and we really, we have to stop meeting like this. Hey, hey, kid. If I beat the wiretap case, you gonna jump off the Capitol Dome again? <laughs> hey, Bobby! Hey! Hey, Bobby! Get ready for the next round, kid! <laughs> On December 28, 1957, the wiretap trial in New York came to an abrupt halt. Twelve jurors couldn't reach a decision as to Jimmy's guilt. It was a hung jury. Jimmy was off the hook again. Santa Claus pay his dues. He drives a sled, don't he? If he ain't got a team to climb, we'll shut him down. Now I got that little runt right where I want him. Now I chase Bobby off my back for good. Now the brat learns how hardball is played. Jimmy declared open war on Bob Kennedy and his investigators. He encouraged his rank and file to be defiant. In Detroit, committee investigator Gene Sears tried to serve a subpoena. In Flint, Michigan, a McClellan committee witness received a warning. Hello? Didn't we tell you not to take any more trips to Washington? You really like babbling to that committee that much, huh? On May 5, 1958, much to the dismay of the Justice Department, Jimmy Hoffa won his second wiretap trial. He beat the wiretap retrial. He did it again. The judge didn't think it was improper that he bugged his own people. He said it wasn't wiretapping, it was eavesdropping. <laughs> That's almost funny. Point for Hoffa. He's winning more than points, Bobby. He's winning the press. After a year and a half, the press is bored with corruption. The other side of the coin looks more attractive. A ruthless committee that can't make a case against top of stick. We need something else. Another way to shake up the press. What about this a systematic war against our staff and our witnesses? 
Our people are being brutalized. Are you telling me that that story isn't newsworthy? Bob, you saying it doesn't convince anyone it's an organized effort. You have to establish a solid link. Kierdor. Bob asked me to look over some files the other day. I seem to remember at least eight different field reports, all of them mentioning Kierdor by name. Three of them in Nashville, at least five in Flint. Frank Kierdor, after serving time in the Michigan State Prison for armed robbery, was put in charge of Teamster Local 332 by James Riddlehoffa himself. So what are you driving? Well, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but it seems perfectly clear to me that Kierdorf is a Teamster enforcer. And I think you can place him in at least two different states in the act of enforcing. There's your link. of his body. He won't survive the night. Is there any chance I can get a statement? You can try. Mr. Kierdorf. My name is Phil Wharton, and I'm an investigator for the McClellan Committee. Believe me, I'm deeply sorry to have to disturb you. But we have to find out what happened, on whose orders, and how long this has been going on. Frank, for God's sakes, talk to me. God, screw yourselves. With violence, intimidation, and death scaring off their witnesses, the committee had no choice. They needed Hoffa yeah. on the stand one more time. Stephen, the committee is calling you back to testify. You'll never let go. Not ever. No, Jimmy. It's the last card he can play. If you beat that damn committee face to face again, he's finished. You win it all, Jimmy. Unless he turns them against me, then I am a loser. I lose the only thing in this world that ever mattered. All right. It's true. The McClellan Committee is calling me back to testify. Why? Because the committee is falling apart. And Bobby Kennedy is taking one more shot at his favorite target, Jimmy Hoffa. Well, go ahead, Kennedy. Take your shot. Hoffa's ready for you, Kennedy. Go on and take your shot. Why? Is the committee falling apart? Because they accomplished nothing. The Teamsters are their only target, and they can't make anything stick. It's get the Teamsters or die. And they're losing. And Hoffa is still here. And Hoffa will always be here, if that's the way you want it, brothers. Is that the way you want it? Hoffa will always be here. Believe that. Believe that. Let's face it. Bobby Kennedy is scared. You know what he's scared of? He's scared of you. He's scared of the power that you'll have with a national contract. 
He's scared of the power you'll have with Jimmy Hoffa and Washington fighting your battles. The power is shifting in this country, brothers. The power is shifting. It's shifting to the working man. And the great committee knows it. That's why they're in business. You know what Bobby Kennedy wants? He wants somebody else standing up here addressing you. Some soft-livered, fat-bellied yes-man who'll sell your butts to the bosses, who'll side with the Kennedys every time. The question is, brothers, what do you want? Who do you want? Who gets your vote? Who gets your support? Who gets your good contract? After Republican victories in the 1958 senatorial election, the McClellan Committee was under intense pressure to dissolve. But Bobby Kennedy held his ground. He and his investigators prepared for Jimmy Hoffa's final committee appearance. You ain't that slick, Senator. That bill you're pushing is a strike-breaking, union-busting bill, and you know it! Mr. Hoffa, this bill is not a strike-breaking, union-busting bill. You're the best argument I know for it. Your testimony here today, your complete indifference to the fact that numerous people who hold responsible positions in your union come before this committee and take the Fifth Amendment time after time because an honest answer might tend to incriminate them, that alone is reason enough to see this bill enacted. We are going to do something, Mr. Hopper, about the injustices in this society. A beautiful campaign speech, Senator. But you ain't fooling me, and you ain't fooling the honest working men in this country. All of a sudden, you two Lord Fauntleroy's want to save the working man. Well, we don't need saving. We got a union that works fine, and there ain't nothing either one of you can do about it, you rich punks. All right, Mr. Hoffa, let's, uh, let's see if I have this correct. A trucking company called Commercial Carriers had a problem. All their expensive trucks were tied up in a strike. So you came along and settled the strike. Later, a friendly lawyer set up a company called Test Fleet that bought all those expensive trucks from commercial carriers and then leased the same trucks back to them. And then sometime later, this very same lawyer became the first president of Test Fleet. Well, that's uh, your version of it, Bobby. I don't expect you to get it exactly right. Well, uh, let's see how close I can come, Mr. Hopper. While Teamster President, you set up a corporation called Test Fleet that uh, leased trucks to your own Teamster drivers. That is clearly a violation of the federal antitrust statutes, uh, isn't it? Well, I did not lease, I did not own... But a company called Test Fleet was set up by your attorney, and then the stock was transferred, is that correct? Uh... I, I, I think you're right. Who was, the, who was the stock transferred to? I thought you said... Answer the question, please, Mr. Hopper. Who was the stock transferred to? Josephine Poserwack and Alice John. Louder, please. Josephine Poserwack and Alice Johnson. Louder, please. Who exactly is Josephine Poserwack? My wife is Josephine Poserwack. Approximately how much money did your wife make from Test Fleet, Mr. Hopper? I can't answer that offhand. Well, I believe I can. Well, that's fine, Senator. It seems the total payment from Test Fleet to your wife and to Mrs. Brennan in their maiden names as of 1956 amounted to $125,000. That's $125,000 based on a $7,000 investment. So? You got something against the free enterprise system, Senator? No, just its abuses, Mr. Abuses? Hoffa. Abuses? You accuse me of financial abuses, eh? Hey, a Kennedy is accusing me of financial abuses. A damn bootleg is such. Your old man was into fools and running guns before you were born. If you were born with gangs, you won't get tried and respond to stars of the government. We really get a union here. You know what it is? Get me union here. Let's go back to recess and get it all back.
Big shot, huh? Why don't you take your feet off the public property, big shot? Excuse me? You hurt me, you son of a bitch. You leave my wife out of this. Are you, are you speaking to me? I'm not speaking to you. You're the only son of a bitch I see around here. Let go of me. My wife was one of the finest women ever walked the face of this earth. And don't you dirty her name. No, but we're not after dirty anybody's name. The hell you're not. Like I said, we're after the truth. truth. Yeah, the Kennedy truth. That we can get to you in a lot faster. faster. For you and Brother if, Jack. If you didn't you know have such you a selective memory. You're a rich, spoiled little rat. They come on, right? You couldn't get a job as a law clerk if you didn't have a millionaire for a father. That's what. Yeah, a minute ago, he was a big like mine. Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, Bobby. Next year, old man, old Jimmy here is a damn safe bet of the CC. Maybe, Jimmy, but you do it. Don't rob anymore. You don't steal I don't from the working man. The working man. You what don't. What do you know about a working man? You don't help the mob you build a legitimate empire. The mob in this you don't country. Have to build a not anymore. anymore. In conclusion, we find Mr. Hoffa culpable in 33 acts of misconduct or impropriety. We will present all of our findings to the proper authorities in the sincere hope that justice will be done. That brings an end to the work of this committee. In two short years, we have investigated the management of the Sears and Roebuck Company. A&P, Whirlpool, Safeway, the New York Times, and the New York Daily News, among others. Our scrutiny in the field of labor includes the Bakery Workers Union, the operating engineers, the mail deliverers, the boiler makers, the UAW, and a continuing list of over a dozen others. Our work is over. The job for the American people has just begun. drugstore cowboy <laughs> not anymore Liz. you ready for a real big laugh yeah. big laugh yeah. my people tell me that bobby went to lbj hat in hand and personally asked them he begged them he begged them to climb on a ticket with his brother jack <laughs> bobby kennedy is a hypocrite and they call jimmy hoffa a crook <laughs> let's go work our butts off 
for Richard Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> could tell you, but you couldn't print it. So print that. It's time, Jimmy. Go ahead, turn it on. And if you're gonna break it again. <laughs> on this beautiful day in yeah. Washington, the youngest I never figured Jack would appoint his own brother to attorney general. general. You knew it all the time. Hopefully he'd come to his senses. Four years with that little lunatic. Four years. I promise to uphold protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, so help me God. And I promise to uphold, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, so help me God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ben! <laughs> have you, have you, uh... Considered my offer? You're looking at your new press secretary. When do I start? When you uh, walked in the door. <laughs> okay, can we have just a moment of quiet, please? Bob, we can't see a thing from back here. Okay, take a good look. Now look, I know a lot of people ask how a uh, lawyer with no trial experience got to be the Attorney General of the United States. Well, I'll, I'll tell you. I started in this department as a young lawyer in 1950. My salary was 4,000 a year, but I worked hard. I was ambitious. I studied. I, uh, I applied myself. And then my brother was elected president of the United States. <laughs> in, in my opinion, this country faces Two major problems, civil rights and organized crime. Well, uh, we're going to improve one and uh, ruin the other. <laughs> organized crime is one of the most serious situations facing this country at the present. The mob has gotten bigger over the last 10 years, but we are going to reverse that trend. I'm afraid crime is part of the fiber of this country now. It's, it's in the face of every child who, who thinks it's chic to get away with something. It's in every adult who admires a shiny car and thinks that cheating is, a, is an acceptable way to get it. The mob has become a tax-paying citizen with a city all its own. A city called Vegas. A city that uh, Jimmy Hoffa helped to build. Unfortunately, Organized crime feels very secure in this country. And we're going to do our best to make them feel nervous. This is the beginning of a new era for the Justice Department. I expect you all to do your part.
Dammi altri giornali con altri titoli. That was our connection at the uh, bureau. Kennedy's formed his own half a hit squad. He's coming after you with everything he's got, Jimmy. And he's going after everyone else. And I'm talking everyone. From New Orleans to Miami to St. Louis. That arrogant runt. He don't know what he's doing. He just don't know what the hell he's doing. It's only 12.20 a.m. Another short day at the office. Where do we stand with Hoffa? Uh, now that it, uh, he's outmaneuvered the board of monitors, he's got his hands on the union again. Uh, Word has it that he's going to push for another Teamster convention sometime next month, make the whole thing official. Any chance he won't be reelected? Are you kidding? He's stronger than ever. What else? Our plan to indict low-level Teamster officials is working. Uh, we're going after everybody who destroys evidence or gives false testimony. And Bob, all of a sudden, you would be amazed. They're finding it a lot easier to talk. Easier than facing an obstruction of justice or perjury, Rath. Then they are talking. All over the country. Uh, suddenly, they're more afraid of you than they are of Jimmy and the mob. You just keep the pressure out. They're starting to buckle. What's your next move? We have enough evidence to nail Hoffa. Uh, on a conflict of interest route based on his involvement in test fleet. A violation of Taft Hartley? I know. An antitrust case? That's all you're the head of my investigation. That's the best you can do. I know, look, I know it's small potatoes. It's a lousy misdemeanor, but Bob, listen, it's solid. Uh, in my personal opinion, I feel very strongly that we should move on this. I will guarantee you a conviction. He'll get off with 90 days and a fine. And we will have a conviction. Okay. It's your operation. Move. Okay. We will go for an indictment in Tennessee, where Test Fleet was formed. If we went after him in Detroit, we wouldn't stand a chance, because he, he owns the town. Look at that. Jimmy is still burning the midnight oil. Mom, where are you going? If Papa can find something to do at 12.20 a.m., so can I. Great. Thanks, Jim. In 1959, one year before Mr. Kennedy became Attorney General, less than 40 top persons in organized crime were targeted for prosecution. But in Robert Kennedy's first full year as Attorney General, this number has risen to more than 1,300. Of those 1,300, more than 200 top crime figures have gone to trial. Among those arrested, indicted, or convicted, we have seen Antonio Tony Ducks Corallo, indicted December 8, 1961. Joe Valachi, arrested December 27, 1961. Crazy Joe Gallo, sentenced to a 7 to 14 year prison term for extortion, January 5th, 1962. And Carlos Marcello, apprehended and deported, April 7th, 1961. And so, when the President of the United States named his brother Attorney General, some called it nepotism. But my friends, if this is nepotism, let's see more of it. The Kennedy administration, spearheaded by Attorney General Robert Kennedy, is waging the greatest war against organized crime that this country has ever seen. And this reporter, for one, wishes them continued success. Who's in the car? All the heavy hitters. Hmm. Expecting a conversation, not a convention. Well, they're worried, Jim. Kennedy's pushing so hard. They, well, they just want everyone to feel comfortable with everyone. They're worried about me? They think I fold to that little worm? No, Jim. All, all they're trying to say is, hey, we're here if you need us. You can rely on us in Miami. 
You can count on us. Anytime. That's, uh, cut the grease, Tony. It's the Bridgewater loan. That's a five million dollar loan to a company with less than 80 grand in assets? I can't okay that. Some things are very painful, Jim. But we all know you can rubber stamp any loan you want. I don't negotiate with you. Friendships are starting to collapse all over. We don't need a falling out between us. Not us, not anyone. Hello, Jimmy. Come in. Suppose that thing. Make yourself come. Okay, the Bridgewater loan. You gotta understand my position. I understand, Jimmy. Positions can change. The damn pressure never stops. What pressure is that, Jimmy? Uh, in the old days, I got in bed with the boys. Now Kennedy puts pressure on them, and they put pressure on me. Jimmy, do you think you can help me out with my little problem here? Hey, Ed. I just bought a brand new 270 rifle with a high-powered scope on it. It's supposed to shoot real straight without dropping off. You know where I can uh, get a silencer for it? What makes it, Jim? What's your, uh, problem? <laughs> ah, it's this, this kidnapping charge they got against me. It's a bum rap, Jimmy. I mean, I was helping a brother teamster get his own kid back. His own damn kid. They charged me with kidnapping. There's no better get involved with a man and his family. <laughs> Just a sucker for a sob story, I guess. Well, I, I don't know. I could... About 50 grand, I guess. Lawyers and stuff, and... Enough to post my bond, keep me out on bail. Okay. You know, Eddie, this uh, guy Kennedy is a real dummy. <laughs> I mean, he drives around in this uh, convertible with top down all the time. That house he lives in. Sits out there next to the road, bigger than hell, no fences, no guards. No, nothing. Somebody could just lob a bomb in there like dumping a basket. That's crazy talk, Jim. Yeah. Crazy talk. I'll look into your problem. Hit the road, hardhead. Thanks a lot, Jim. I really appreciate it. God bless you. If you were without counsel, Mr. Pardon, the court is prepared to provide it for you. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'm, I'm waiting for an attorney from the Teamsters Union. He's supposed to have my bail. It's all been arranged. He promised he'd take care of it. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Pardon, but I'm afraid you'll have to do the rest of your waiting in a detention cell. The prisoner is remanded to custody to await sentencing. Um, excuse me, I have a phone call. Could we, could we move the entire thing over here? Sure. 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 Uh, hello? Bob, uh, I have in my hands a report from the FBI people in Louisiana. Yeah, okay, here we go. Right? Let's get it down. Teamster official claims that Hoffa may have approached him about having you killed. Good. And what's his name? Edward Grady Parton. There's something going on out there, something I don't like. Small world.
It happens out there, but it echoes in here. You don't believe me, do you? I can see it in your eyes. You figure partner's looking for a way to get out of prison on Hoffa's back. Well, maybe I am, but Jimmy Hoffa put me in here in the first place. He did it, I'm telling you, he did it. He <clears throat> talked about Kennedy. He, he talked about the rifle. He, he asked me about uh, plastic explosives. He said it'd be easy as making a basket. <sighs> he did it. It was his idea. All I ever did was every lousy, stinking job the Teamsters ever asked. Sure, I'm mad, but I ain't lying. I swear to you, I am not lying. Save it, pardon. I don't have to believe you. The machine does. How the hell with the damn machine? It ain't admissible in a court of law, and we both know that. Look, this is between you and me, pal. You put it in your damn report that Ed Pardon is a savvy con. And I know that the information off of that damn machine ain't worth a hill of beans. Ah. Did Hoffa do it, Parton? Did he actually threaten to kill the Attorney General of the United States? <sighs> I crossed Jimmy Hoffa if I wasn't telling the truth. Bob, I've been looking all over for you. Make it fast. Justice has got problems in Alabama. Yeah, well, we got some problems in Louisiana. Uh, the polygraph verified part in the story. Looks like he's telling the truth. Uh, what's the uh, next move? The next move is to get some federal marshals to protect you. Oh, Hopper will love that. Me, you walking around with uh, a lot of federal marshals on my tail. Forget it. What else? Do you arrange to bail Parton out? Gave him a phone patch. And uh, looks like we got Ed Parton on our team. That doesn't make any sense. What, why, would he, why would he do something like that? Well, uh, he just decided he'd rather be with us than, uh, than with Hoffa. It's out of control. This thing with Jimmy, it's, it's moved onto a new plane. He intensifies his response. We intensify ours. I don't want Jack to know. You won't. Damn it. This is a uh, hell of a thing to discuss in the Oval Office. Jimmy, it's Ed Pardon. Hey, Ed. How's it going? <clears throat> okay, Jim. Back on the street. Ah, that's great news, kid. Yeah. A dumb rap. I sat on it for a while and finally managed to raise bail myself. <laughs> Congratulations, you lousy kidnapper, you. So what's on your mind? Uh, well, I just some things I want to talk to you about. You know, union problems. Sure, why don't you meet me in Nashville? I got this dumb Bobby Kennedy trial to deal with. Bobby Kennedy again, huh? Yeah, the little worm loves rigging up trials for me. Now it's his phony test fleet rap. Two-bit misdemeanor. <sighs> yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll be there to hold your hand. By the way, Jim, I know where we can get that plastics package we spoke about. Talk to me in Nashville.
That's right. It's a trial. It shouldn't even be called a trial. It's a minor. That's nothing. It's a fire on somebody. It's a fire on a super. We don't anticipate any problems. Hey, big man. Nice to see you. Remember that button? The world stands at the brink of Armageddon. Will the Russians challenge the American Navy on the high seas? The world waits in terror. Who is it? Hey, pardon. I'm really sorry for the visit at 3 a.m. It's okay. It's safer that way. All right. Do you want a drink? No. Okay. Do you mind if I smoke? Sit down. <clears throat> Papa's got his hooks into the jury. He thinks the fix is in. Which jury? I don't know. I spoke to the Attorney General, and he told me to tell you that he's heard from the Louisiana DA and there's every possibility that we can resolve your kidnapping problems. Good, uh, that's good to know. Look, uh, <clears throat> Jimmy says there's an offer out to one of the jurors. And he's going to want me to pass the money when the time comes. Well, that's helpful. I'm glad we're cementing our relationship, that it's going to prove valuable to all of us. Yeah. Well, believe me, as soon as I find out who that juror is, I'll, I'll let your people know. I promise you, I'll get you your proof. That's what we want. <laughs> Doesn't take any crap, does he? The president, I mean. Runs in the family, Ed. Yeah. Now, that part's good. Now, just tell them to increase the insurance benefits, then give me a bottom line figure. What's the deal? Uh, these are for you, Jim. Six and a half? No, no. Tell them seven and a half or no deal. How do you keep it all in your head, huh, Jim? Because I love doing it, that's why. What's the figure? Good. Tell him he's got a deal. What's the offer? Seven and a quarter. No. Make him sweat. Stick it to him. No deal. Seven and a half or no deal. All right. That's what Bobby Kennedy don't understand. I love you guys. Nobody loves you the way I do, and nobody takes care of you the way I do. Especially not Bobby Kennedy with his sword of justice in his hand. But he don't realize the only thing standing between you guys and real corruption is Jimmy Hoffa. Jimmy! Hey, who is it? Hey! <laughs> hey, hell of a guy. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> hey, you ain't Jimmy. <laughs> right. I love voice here in local 327. Like it or not, we're behind you 110 percent. Is there anything we can do? I love you. How's Jan and the kids? You remember my wife's name? Kind of president you think I am? We got to talk about something. Go in the back room. I have a black coffee to go, please. There's a woman on the jury named Mrs. Pasco. Her husband's a Tennessee State Patrolman. Well, Newing King was at the hotel last night. He thinks he can pressure the cop to lean in on his wife. Well, I'll let you know. On the money, Big Daddy. I can see the license plates. I can make the license plates on both cars. It's Pascal and King. We can see them both. Positive ID. Barton even predicted they'd switch cars and where we'd resume contact with King. Bob, his information's solid. Every bit of it. What did the judge do? He read all the evidence and resealed it. He was furious. Yeah, he's holding on to the proof in case a mistrial is declared. Keep Parton alive. If Hoffa gets wind of what's going on, that might not be easy. Easy or hard, just keep him alive. Do I own her or not? This is, uh, Pascal's off the jury. What? You and King was followed. Well, look, Jimmy, don't worry about it. We could ride out the situation. I Jimmy. came out of here. I came out of here. Pardon. Where's that part? Hey, pardon? Where's that part? Pardon? Okay, um, 
Pardon, where the hell are you? Pardon? Hey, get in. Come on. We got a problem. The game's over. Get in here. Come on. Take it easy, man. We got to find a place to talk. You and me. In here. Oh. How about you, Ed? You got any ideas? I'm sorry, Jimmy. I got no idea. Okay. Tell you what I did. I hired six off-duty cops to tighten security around here, and I want you to take charge of the most important job. I want you in charge of the door to my suite. Yeah, okay, Jimmy. What do you say? I still got a lock on this thing, and I don't want Bobby Kane to screw it up. Well, Mrs. Pascoe, she's not on the jury anymore, Jimmy. To hell with her. I still got the old juror in my hip pocket. He's kin to a Teamster business agent. He won't take no money, but he won't go against his own people either. She's one man, Jimmy. One man is a hung jury. And a hung jury is as good as an acquittal. I'd love to see Bobby's face if it comes in hung. <laughs> <laughs> now, this isn't worth it, Jimmy. Let it go. Randy, he wants to kill me. That little runt wants to put me under the ground. Jimmy, you'll bury yourself if you do this. I mean, you're moving a misdemeanor into a felony rap. Jimmy, look, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, don't do this. Don't do it. It's one lousy conviction. Leave the jury alone. You better decide whose side you're on. Because I'm looking for Bobby's plant. If it turns out to be you, you buy the farm. Forget the 20 years. Forget the friendship. Forget everything. You're a dead man. You're history. You don't exist. I gotta win. I gotta survive. I can't let him win. Not one round. You understand that, don't you? Jimmy, Jimmy. It's too late. To which I mean. I'm gonna love you till the day I die. We've already lost. Only well, you don't know it. Excuse me. Excuse me, Jim. just came in from Nashville. It's a hung jury. Are you sure? Are you absolutely certain? Not again. I don't understand. This is not justice. What does it take, Annie? What does it take to win? Although Jimmy had won in Nashville, the sealed evidence of his jury tampering left the door open I... for another indictment. Sorry, Jim, bad news. Our mutual friend in Nashville, he thinks the grand jury's gonna indict.
Then they were quit. You know, the biggest mistake I made in my life was crossing that Kennedy bastard. <laughs> well, he stepped on a few people, too. He's made his own mistakes. Listen, Tony, why don't you hang around for a while and maybe we'll talk? No, I can't, Jim. I'm on a move. Got a lot of stops to make. I got Texas, New Orleans, Vegas. And this is from our mutual friend in St. Louis. It's just saying thanks for the loan. Hey, Tony. Listen. You and I have been friends for a long time. You tell me if the wind was shifting, wouldn't you? What are you driving at, Jim? About a month ago, I hired a cop to check out my house, you know, with the electric thing? Yeah. You know what he found? Five bugs. In my house, he found five bugs. Are you trying to say we did this? Do you think I let them do that to you, to Joe? Hey, pal, if I didn't trust you, I'd do it different. A 22 in the back of the head and out. I know that. It's Kennedy, damn it. It's got to be Kennedy. I knew it. What the hell did I ever do to that bastard? What did I do to him? Don't he know that I can't get out? Even if I wanted to get out, I couldn't. I ain't saying I want to. Hey, take it easy, Jim. Don't talk like that. I'm okay. I didn't say nothing. You know, I didn't say nothing. You didn't hear nothing. Everything's okay. <laughs> Everything's fine. All right. It's fine. Okay. okay. I don't believe what I'm seeing here today. I keep telling myself, this is America. We don't show, stop children from going to school. We don't stop people from eating in, in restaurants. This, this is America, and something must be done. The police are, are hunting down many people in the streets. They're hitting them with I know I'm not considered much of a civil rights advocate, but I'd like to be of some help. If you figure to move on this bill, I reckon I could shake a few more votes out of some trees. Thank you, Lyndon. I appreciate the uh, strong right arm. Uh -huh. hey, will there be anything else? Not at this time, no. Well, excuse me. Oh, that's all right, Bob. I just on the way out. Unless you want me to stay. No, no, that won't be necessary. This was just a personal matter. Hmm. He, uh, he still doesn't like me, does he? He knows you've tried to keep it from the VP spot. That's the uh, latest news from the Hoffa front. Jimmy's done it to himself again. He was, uh, he was facing a misdemeanor or an antitrust action, but uh, he improved the case all the way up to a felony when he started tampering with the jury. My people feel sure that the Nashville grand jury will indict. The press thinks this uh, Hoffa thing is much too personal. Well, don't uh, believe everything you read in the papers. I still form my own opinions without the help of the New York Times. Mr. President, if, uh, if Hoffa gets away with this, they all get away with it. Every hood, every, every thug in this country is suddenly 10 feet taller. I, I won't permit that. I always start to worry when you refer to me as, uh, Mr. President. We're trying to, uh, to do something about the evil in this society, and we are beginning to get somewhere. Don't ask me to stop. Bobby, this is just a form of corruption and greed. It would be as difficult to eliminate this from the American scene as it would be to eliminate it from the New York Stock Exchange. No, no, we can't eliminate it. But that doesn't mean that we have to peacefully coexist with it. Jack, we made a deal once. I'm, I'm, I'm calling it in. I want your support on this thing. Wholehearted or, or half-hearted, however you want to offer it up. I need your backing. 
A deal is a deal. I seem to remember the ambassador teaching us never to renege. Morning, Alan. Listen, uh, give me everything that you got in that three million buck loan to Bellingham. Yeah, sure, Jim. Yep. <laughs> Who's listening? You use on the phone? No. Anybody touch the phones? No one, Mr. Hoffman, no one. Is that you, Kennedy? But Bob Kennedy wasn't there. He had started a 50-mile hike to Camp David. The president had challenged his attorney general to be as fit as his marines. Bob accepted for the entire White House staff. You think this is getting Hoffa out of his system? If it is, it may do wonders for Bob, but it's going to kill us. <laughs> yeah. oh. Bob, it's time for our 10-minute break. That's uh, tempting, isn't it? Yeah, Bob, I can signal for our show for any time you want. Let's go. Bob, it isn't 10 minutes yet. been more than 35 miles now. My legs are getting stiff. I think I've done enough walking for one day. You've done fine. Why don't you rest? Well, why don't you join me? I'd like to, but I don't think I can. Why not? That's why. And then, of course, there's his, uh, his friend. Just consider yourself lucky your brother isn't the president. Good luck. I checked that desk already, Bennett. Bring it over here. We gotta find it now. It's here. We'll find it. What are you doing here? Congratulations. For what? I haven't finished yet. Forget the stroll. Think Nashville. The grand jury? They indicted. Five counts of jury tampering. Quote, aiding, inducing, and commanding, unquote. It's a felony rap. It's hard time, Bob. We got him. Exactly where we want him. And he's done it to himself. What is it? <laughs> Nothing. I'm tired. I want to stop. But I can't. I just... I just don't know how. It's here, some people. It's got him. It's here, some people. Keep looking. Give me that thing. I'll find it. I'll find it. You think I can't find it? Jimmy. What do you want? What do you want? The Nashville Grand Jury just came in. It's an indictment, Jimmy. Five counts, jury tampering. Good little bastard. Get off me. Get 
Get off me. Get off of my back. Get off of my back. Get off of my back. You hear me? That's it. These things go in cycles. I believe we can look forward to an era of recovery. If our problems are resolved. To overreact is a mistake. Uh, the greater mistake is to do nothing. Forgive me, but I do not think that Hoffa can handle the next four years. Question calls a day about Friday. Impossible. It's all about to take down. Siamo stato KPC di cui era un impero. Allora, tutto è possibile. Is this all we've got on the interstate jukebox situation? We're proceeding as fast as we can. Yes. And uh, you were doing a terrific job. Thank you. And on the I think we'll all do a lot better in 1964. Thank you. Thank you. You know, whenever I visit at one of our FBI field offices to uh, yes. check on our progress, our agents seem genuinely pleased at the way things are going. I've asked you not to do that. You can get your briefings you, from me. I don't like to see the Attorney General developing a relationship with my field agents. Why not? My agents report to one authority. I don't want them confusing their responsibility. Well, then I'd like my briefings on a monthly basis. Mr. Thank Hoover? You, thank you. As you know, Bob, my briefings are made quarterly, and they're made to the president. I'm sure you can obtain a copy from him. From here on, your uh, briefings will be made monthly, and they'll be made to me. I don't do that. I deal directly with the president. That is how I function. Well, maybe in the past, but uh, this is different. In this administration, you deal directly with your immediate superior. And that happens to be the attorney general. All your open colors, your white shirts and no jackets. You have no sense of position. No sense of office. Where is your dignity, Mr. Kennedy? I don't know. I, I think maybe I left it in Massachusetts. There are files on you, Mr. Kennedy. On all of you. And your father. But I'll never use them. You see, I have a sense of dignity. You can take comfort in that. The only thing you won't do is use them while Jack is president. Don't threaten me, Mr. Hoover. And please, uh, feel free to uh, do what you like with those files. The Kennedys are going to be around for quite a while. You can take comfort in that.
Have a good day. I'm not trying to pull anybody off of the job. I'm merely trying to reach an accommodation. What's the matter with you? Kennedy's been shot. Which Kennedy? Which Kennedy? The president. Well, little Bobby's out of work. Get out of here. Like I said, Really trying to reach an accommodation. Now, give me your best offer. What are you waiting for, tears? Get out of here! No, I'm still here. Give me the numbers again, please. It's been so much bitterness. So much hatred. I thought they might get one of us. But Jack, after all he's been through, he never worried about it. He just... He just... laughed it off. Just last week, someone in Texas wrote, warning me, not to let the president go to Dallas because they were going to kill him. I sent a note to Kenny O'Donnell and he passed it to the Secret Service. But we, we just laughed it off. I never thought it would happen. I thought they would come after me. I wish they had. I don't want any of this. I don't want any of this. I won't have my home turned into an armed camp. Oh, Father. It's only a precaution, that's all. We don't need them now. They're too late. Every marshal in the district and in Northern Virginia volunteered. They can get the children to and from school. They can be around if you or Ethel need them. Ed, I don't want a lot of people guarding me. I, can't, I, won't, I won't be smothered. I can't change how I do things. Not now. I need to work. We're not asking you to stop work. We... We just want to have the marshals at the house for a while and with the children when they go to school. You don't want to leave Ethel alone now, especially when you meet the plane. No, no I don't. Want to leave Ethel alone. And I don't want to meet the plane. Oh. oh, God. I don't want to meet that plane.
half mast. Now you listen carefully. Run that flag back up again. This is the Teamsters International, and we will not be hypocrites. Run the flag back up again. Stop that. I'm sorry, Mr. Hoover. All right, Randy, let's get back to it. What page are we on? Shall we? Jimmy, he was the president of the United States. And he used my blood to get the job. I'm through rolling over. I don't mourn. I don't lower flags. I don't do anything but breathe. For the first time in a long time, I breathe. And there he is now, the accused assassin of John F. Kennedy, Lee Harvey Oswald, is being led down the corridor by sheriff's police. And he... He's been shot! Wait, Lee Harvey Oswald has been shot! on TV? That's it. That's it. It's over. I'm out. I'm out. Take me out of circulation. Don't you understand what's happened here? Oswald has been silenced. Oswald is not a problem anymore! There's a lot going on here. There's a hell of a lot more going on here than people know about, and I want out. Who are you afraid of, Ed? I don't even know who to be afraid of! I, I just want out. Out! I'll tell you who you'd be afraid of. You'd be afraid of Hoffa when he finds out what you've done, because when he finds out, you are a dead man. He's just another lawyer now. You see, honey, LBJ hates that little worm. He'll chew him up and spit him out. I'd love to be a fly on the wall when those two meet. will not negotiate his contract. Hello, Trouble. What blows you my way? Jimmy, I just wondered if you had a comment. Comment? Mm -hmm. On what? Haven't you heard? LBJ asked Bobby to stay on as Attorney General, and Bobby accepted. Any comment, Jimmy? No. stay on as Lyndon Johnson's attorney general. There were several jobs he was determined to complete. One of them had begun more than seven years before. I think this is it. <laughs> he can't do it, not this time. He can't beat a jury tampering rap, can he? Not if we can keep our witness alive for 20 minutes. What is going on, General? <laughs> Just hold on to your hat. See you in 20 minutes.
Come on, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, the photo you are now looking at was taken by Mr. Joe Rudis, a photographer for the Nashville Tennessean. Okay, Ed, this leads directly to the witness stand. When you hear Neil call for the next witness, you just step right on through, and you are on. Okay, you okay? You understand? Good luck. While you pass the photo along, I will identify the people you are looking at. From left to right, you can see Mr. James Riddle Hoffa, William Buffalino, Daniel Maher, Chuck O'Brien. Wait a minute. Alan Dorfman, John Ivey, Ewan King. And walking beside Mr. King is Mr. Edward Grady Parton. Now, there is nothing really remarkable about this photo. Just a few friends walking along together. You may have wondered why I have bothered with it. My only motive is to uh, have you, the jury, familiar with the people in this photo, with Mr. Hoffa's friends and associates. With your honor's permission, I would now like to call our next witness. The prosecution calls Mr. Edward Grady Parton. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Your name and occupation, please. My name is Edward Grady Parton, Secretary Treasurer, Business Manager for Local 5 of the Teamsters Union. And how long have you held that office, Mr. Parton? The past 12 years. And how long have you known personally James Hoffa? Seven years. Mr. Parton, do you have any information about Mr. Hoffa's possible involvement with jury tampering in Nashville, Tennessee? Yes, I do. I demand a mistrial, what? Your Honor. What? I the, demand a mistrial. This is on a federal payroll. He's, he's been working for Bobby Kennedy. How much is he paying you? He's, he's a convicted felony. He, he, I meant kidnap, Your Honor. The whole country's watching this trial. You want to kidnap or understand, Your Honor? You kidnap. lousy fake, you'll rot in the federal pen. That's where you're going back to jail. Guilty on two counts. Bob? Bob, did you hear me? I said guilty on two counts. Sentenced to eight years in a federal penitentiary. Eight years for jury tampering, Bob, and he did it all to himself. Bob, are you listening? Bob, oh, and Bob, if he loses the pension fund case in Chicago, he has had it. He is finished for good, Bob. Jimmy did lose the trial in Chicago. He was convicted and sentenced to an additional five years for defrauding the Teamster Pension Fund. Bob was now moving to etch his own political future. His days as Attorney General were coming to a close. from here. Well, I'm not sure. I may help uh, Pierre with his senatorial campaign in California. I, uh, I haven't decided yet about running in New York. I've got an offer in Miami, finance, banking. I think I'll stay on here, Justice. 
And when you do make up your mind about New York, call me. I, uh... I think history will be kind. We have really done something here. At least we've tried. Maybe we'll try again. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> few, we happy few, we band of brothers. One day people will ask why I got caught up in this investigation. Some will say it was because of the people I hated. But a few will know it was because of the people I loved. went on to be elected senator from New York, and Jimmy stayed in Washington for the next two years, <coughs> fighting desperately to keep out of prison. That envelope gives you a yes? Not yet. <clears throat> Give me the word. <clears throat> Sally, what you say, what you know. <clears throat> <clears throat> Maxwell Cole, you just got another appeal hearing. Great! I'll bet it galls that little worm to know that two and a half years after his chief tinhorn conviction, I'm still running this union. Yeah, he's a senator now, Jimmy. Don't you think he's got more important things on his mind? Not him. I'll bet he watches every appeal, every trick, every legal maneuver I pull. I'll bet it keeps him up at night. That's the reason I do it. I'll bet he looks like hell. Yeah, that's it, Jim. Do you look good? Fresh as a daisy, Jimmy. Fresh as a daisy. <laughs> it ain't over yet, Bobby. It ain't over yet. What is it? Just deliver it. The senator could take a big fall. Hoffa could be the net. Don't shove that in my face. Damn you, don't get tough with me, kid. There's stuff in this file that could tear your boss to pieces. This comes from inside the bureau. Yeah, Hoffa still got connections the ex-attorney general ain't even got. You tell him. Tell him he's got to do business with me. Or this stuff's going to hit the streets. What is it, another smear? Spent the last two years trying to stay out of jail? Now you're down to blackmail? You got to be desperate. Why do I have to go to jail? What'd I do that's so bad? I made a couple of mistakes like everybody else. Come off it, Hopper. You tell that to your people. When they get old and they come to you for their pension money, and you got to tell them you spent it on hotels and casinos and companies that were going broke. That's a lie. 
The Teamster Pension Fund is the biggest fund in the world. The Teamster Pension Fund is the biggest fund, the most membership in the world, and you're losing money, and you and I know why. You sold them out. And now you pay. What comes after me? If I take a fall, you don't understand. There are things out there a hell of a lot worse than Jimmy Hoffa. I promise you, if Hoffa goes down, Bobby Kennedy goes down, too. How about it, kid? You want to gamble with the senator's future? Amnesty. A little breathing room. That's all I'm asking for. It's finished. It's not going to work. Let him decide. You just tell him to let Hoffa off the hook. And I'll step down from the presidency. Yeah, he'll have Hoffa out of the union. He'll win. Bobby will win everything, see? He'll win, but no time. Please, tell him I can't do no time. I don't know what'll happen to my union. I don't know what'll happen my wife and kids. You should have thought of that 10 years ago. You did it to yourself, Jimmy. And you're going in. I'll show them the file. You tell them, kid. Tell them there's more where that came from. Jimmy Hoff ain't a bad guy to do business with. Make me look good, kid. Awesome. Great reason, Hines. I knew you wouldn't be able to put it down. Goodbye, Jimmy. Go peddle your garbage somewhere else. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, Hoover is doing the peddling. But I can keep a handle on things if you and I can make a deal. Forget it. No deals. I I'll just have to live with another half a smear. Wait a minute. You know, you know you got your eye on the presidency now, kid. When it comes time for you to make the move, wouldn't you like to know that you, you had the, the team just in your hip pocket? Jim, I am not going to do business with the man I've been trying to incarcerate for nine years. Why not? Is it not a politically assumed move for the next president? Goodbye, Jimmy. You're a problem that doesn't exist anymore. Hear you! Bobby, you... <laughs> yeah, you think you're going to make it, don't you, all the way? Well, let me tell you something, kid. You ain't got a prayer. I'm telling you, you ain't got a prayer. Jack did all right. So will I. Jack had you. Who are you guys? I'm not entirely alone. Yes, you are, Bobby. You're alone just like I am. You ain't got nobody in this world you can trust, Bobby, and neither do I. I'm telling you, kid, we, we both made a lot of big enemies, Bobby. I can prove it to you. What are you talking about? I'm going to give you this one, kid, for free on the house. You ask. J. Edgar Hoover, about the hit on Castro. Your friends in the CIA, they won't tell you, but maybe Hoover will. Tell me what? Uh, yeah, you you thought you had a lid on that hit, didn't you? Well, I ain't the only one that knows, Bobby. There's a whole lot of people out there that know what you did. I'm not buying, Jimmy. Well, I don't care. I, uh, uh, Bobby, you're not as popular as you think, kid. Listen to me. There are powers in government and and out there on the street that don't want to see you anywhere near Pennsylvania Avenue. 
I think you should know that you're not so popular yourself. There are powers that don't want you in charge of the store anymore. I hear that you're planning to file charges that just as bug your home. You're wasting your time. What are we, what are we talking about? Your problems aren't at justice, Jimmy. Your problems are closer than that. Much closer. Don't you know by now it isn't your union anymore? Think about it. Okay. Then let me tell you something. When you were the attorney general, you were the head cop, the number one law enforcement officer in this country. And you were so busy chasing Hoffa that you didn't have time to do your job and protect your own brother. Was it worth it, Bobby? Think about it. Clark. Senator, can we talk? Uh, I'm sorry. I, uh... Surgeon. All right. Go ahead. I was contacted by the FBI. You sit down? Thank you. <clears throat> the hand delivered, uh... Filed to Congressman Gross and to me involved your authorization of FBI wiretaps. Now, uh, I'm going to have to uh, talk to Gross in the morning, but uh, the story's coming out. Oh, God. I think I saw an advance copy of that file. Where'd you get it? That's not important. Look, I can handle a smear from that corner of the world, but not from Hoover. Not from you. Oh, the Bureau. The Bureau's been under fire for questionable tactics. They're looking for an out, and you're it. Will you, will you hold off on the story? I can't do that. Mark. We've been friends for a long time. Just... Just let me talk to Huba. Don't lean on me. I'm a journalist. I've come here for a comment, that's all. Twelve hours. That's the best I can do. Why wasn't I informed? Why didn't you tell me about the scope of the bugging? Well, Bob, you listened to the wiretaps in my field offices. You knew what I was up to. In fact, you authorized it. I authorize limited surveillance, not this. I won't take the heat for a, for a reckless bureau that exceeds its authority. The bureau had your approval. We have memos on file. Oh, I've got copies of the same memos. And it seems that your subordinates wrote one version for you and a different one for me. The scope of this bugging went beyond my authorization. Why? Are you doing this to me? I once told you that your war on crime was premature. But you refused to listen. You wanted information. You demanded it. Now you pay the price for that information. I believed you were staying within my guidelines. You believed what was convenient. Oh, you may have been naive, Senator. But I suggest intentionally naive you like that flow of information 
You didn't want it to end. Oh, don't worry. Your convictions will stand up in court. But I'll see your name tarnished before I see the Bureau's name abused. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment with the President of the United States. Are you going to discuss everything with him, Edgar? Are you going to uh, tell Lyndon that the CIA was working hand in hand with the mob to kill Castro? Wasn't that plan initiated during the Kennedy administration? I knew about the plan in 62 and I squelched it. I am practically the man who saved Mr. Castro's life. And now I find out that, that the plan was resurrected behind my back. Who did it, Mr. Hoover? Who is it who is still doing business with the mob? Take that up with your friends at the CIA. The FBI is law-abiding and unimpeachable. Is that why you spent so many years avoiding a war on crime? Because you, you wanted your department to appear unsoiled? That's right. Every law enforcement agency that came in contact with the mob became corrupt because of their money. The Bureau is still clean. Not anymore. I didn't get this file from the press. I got it from Jimmy Hoffa. Someone in your Bureau gave it to him. I just, I wonder what else he's gotten over the years. The uh, CIA doing business with, with the mob. The Bureau leaking information to its enemies. <laughs> I guess it's true. Sooner or later, everyone does business with everyone. Good day, Mr. Director. Now, we can still pull a rabbit out of the hat. We've done it before, haven't we? Yes, yes, sir. Well, I, I appreciate your call. Why don't you tell him yourself? You got Hoffman here. Go ahead, trucker. Jimmy, I parked my rig on the side of the road. You say the word, and I'll drive right out into the middle of the damn highway and yank the key. They're railroading you, Jimmy. You just give me the okay, and I won't move out of here till I give you a decent break. Your heart's in the right place, pal, but that ain't the way we handle this. You get back in your truck, you get on the road, and you stay there. And don't you let anything interfere with the work of this great union. Not even Jimmy Hoffa. How much time will I do? I mean, real time. Well, maybe 22 months, Jimmy, Good behavior. Uh, I figured 24 months. Max, before parole. Sure. I already read the federal statutes. It's 34 months. Three years. Oh, my God, three years. Damn it, Jimmy. Fight back. Don't let them do this to you. You take the rats off the drivers and... You call a strike, bury him, freeze the country, do any damn thing, call a national strike. No strike. You know I never do that, Randy. You know that. The trucks keep rolling no matter what. Okay. about those bugs in my house, do you, Randy? Come on, me? 
Jimmy, why didn't you cut off my right arm? Cut it off! I loved you for, th for 30 years. And what are you talking about? You run the store for me. You take care of things around here. For three years. I'll be back. I gotta get some rest. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, sure, Jim. Anything you say. Yeah. He's not here. I'll take care. Well, uh, what was his latest offer? Eight and a half? Tell him Randy Powell said ten and a half on no deal. Hello, Trouble. Hello, Jimmy. No questions. Just let me say my piece. How did Bobby get me here? How about his great star witness? The great Edward Grady Park. Don't you find it funny that he was in a prison in Baton Rouge for kidnapping and all of a sudden he's out on bail visiting me and the charges are dropped? And don't forget Chief Justice Earl Warren of the Supreme Court, who wrote a dissenting opinion condemning the fact that I'm being sent to prison based on a testimony of a, of a lousy witness of questionable motives. Jimmy, Hart isn't the only reason you're going to prison. It's eight years for jury tampering, yes, but another five for defrauding the Teamster Pension Fund. That's all garbage. We both know why I'm going in. Because Hoppe was born to burlap and Bobby was born to silk. Because the working people in this country will always lose. And the power, the money, the vested interest, they'll always win. But Jimmy, the mob is a vested interest in this country now. They carry attaché cases instead of guns. They're respectable and you help make them that way. I told you that wiretap smear wouldn't amount to anything with the voters. What's wrong? Jack. Jack's death. Bob, it wasn't your fault. How do I know? How do I know it wasn't something I did? How will I ever know? Well, they're still waiting. The press is late for their deadline. Okay. Let's go. We just got the word. The senator is on his way down. He is on his way down from his victory speech. The senator is on his way down. Robert F. Kennedy. Miles to go before I sleep. Our beloved president. Is On the night he won the California presidential primary, Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated. Seven years later, after being pardoned by Richard Nixon and battling to regain control of his union, Jimmy Hoffa disappeared.
His body has never been found. The conflict between these two men may well have altered the shape of history. For this struggle was not simply between two individuals, but one that may have deeply involved powerful and still untamed forces that continue to affect the course of life in America today. The blood feud between Bobby Kennedy and Jimmy Hoffa is over, but the war for power goes on.